Hello, welcome to Anatomy and Physiology audio series, learning module number 11. This module will discuss the subject of immunity. The chapters I would like you to read this week in order to be prepared for class include chapters 20 and 21. Keep in mind that anything that appears in this learning module is fair game for exams as well as the short quiz that you will have at the beginning of class next time we meet. All right, so when we talk about immunity, we're talking about white blood cells. Um, and we've talked a little bit about white blood cells before, though not that much. Uh, we know, hopefully, by now, that number one, white blood cells can move around. They can go different places in the body. They can get out of the bloodstream, which red blood cells cannot do unless they're, unless they're bleeding, right? Um, and what is their job? They protect the body against infection. Um, and inflammation. So basically they are involved in protection uh, uh, of, of the body um, from pathogens. So uh, one way that uh, white blood cells protect the body from pathogens is through this process called phagocytosis. You really don't have to know all the details of phagocytosis. Um, you just have to know that this is performed by some of the white blood cells and you can think of them as like Pac-Man cells. They're going around eating uh, pathogens, basically. Um, and what they do is, if you look at that picture, is so the purple thing there in the picture is a pathogen, and the, and the white blood cell is engulfing it through a process called endocytosis and taking that pathogen into the cell, and then the cell is slowly digesting the pathogen. That's what's actually happening. Um, for your information, then they sometimes take uh, proteins from the pathogen and they uh, display those proteins on the surface of the cell, but that's a little more complicated than I want to get. So um, go ahead and watch this video. It just, it, it just describes a little bit about phagocytosis. So these are different types of white blood cells. There are... Uh, five different types, uh, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. Uh, the, out of these five different types, you can see that the monocytes and the neutrophils are involved in phagocytosis. So um, they're the ones, they're the actual cells that do this process of phagocytosis, this process that we just watched a video of. Um, the uh, lymphocytes, I want to draw your attention to the lymphocytes, are the only ones that are involved in specific defense. Everybody else is involved in non-specific defense. Okay, so it's only the lymphocytes that are involved in specific defense. And it is the monocytes and the neutrophils that are involved in phagocytosis. So we want to focus on uh, lymphocytes, uh, since lymphocytes are involved in specific immunity. Uh, what does that mean? This means that the cells go after specific pathogens, the measles virus, the flu virus, etc. Phagocytosis and other immune processes are nonspecific, once again. That is, they go after anything that is recognized as a threat. So when we talk about lymphocytes, remember that they are born, first of all, in the bone marrow. They actually mature in the lymphatic system, which we'll discuss in class when we discuss the lymphatic system. Um, and there are, but there are two types that you need to know. There are the uh, T cells and the B cells. These are two types of lymphocytes. So two types of cells involved in specific defense or third line of defense. The T cells uh, attack directly, so they can, they can attack directly. Um, helper T cells also uh, help the B cells produce antibodies and they also help other immune cells as well. B cells secrete antibodies, although oftentimes what really happens is that the B cells um, differentiate into a cell called a plasma cell. We're not gonna worry about that. For simplicity, we're just gonna keep it B cells and T cells. But you may see that term plasma cell um, in other places. Uh, that just is a, a form, it's, it's B cells actually differentiate into plasma cells and it's the plasma cells that produce the antibodies. But like I said, for simplicity, we're just going to keep it T cells and B cells. 
So the B cells secrete the antibodies. Um, unlike other white blood cells, lymphocytes mature in the lymph nodes. In order to understand specific immunity, you need to understand the difference between an antigen and an antibody. An antigen is a protein on the surface of a pathogen or anything basically that reacts with an antibody. So antigens aren't always on the surface of the pathogens. They can, they're really on the surface of any cell. Um, and they are the proteins that react with antibodies. An antibody is a, is a protein secreted by the B cell. So if you look at the uh, picture down there, it'll show you the difference between an antibody and an antigen. They react with each other. So if you look at the um, giant bacterial cell, it's purple. It's got all these green shapes sticking off of it. Those are the antigens because they're on the surface of the bacterial cell. The red uh, Y-shaped structures, those are the antibodies. And the antibodies are attaching to the antigens. All right, so T cells, so we got T cells and B cells. They're both involved in specific immunity. Remember, they're both classified as lymphocytes. Um, and these are the cells that are produced in the bone marrow but mature in the lymphatic system, okay? And they're involved in, in, in specific immunity. We've got two types. We're going to look at the T cells and the B cells. So these are the T cells. Um, the T cells are activated often by uh, macrophages. And once they are activated, they produce what are called clones. Clones are just uh, cells that um, the T cell divides into. So the T cell starts to make multiple copies of itself. And these cells have different jobs. So the cells that the T cells um, multiply into have different jobs. So there are uh, killer T cells, which do just that. They, they kill antigens. There are helper T cells, which um, basically just help out all around. They just help. B cells, but they also help um, some of the other uh, white blood cells as well, um, and they help make uh, the immune system uh, more effective. It, it, in fact, they're so important that, you know, people that um, are unfortunately have uh, HIV, that's the, vi the virus, the HIV virus, that's the cell that the HIV virus impacts, and people who have HIV eventually, if they, uh, you know, now we have better treatments, obviously, for um, HIV AIDS, but people who unfortunately progress to the AIDS stage of the HIV infection, um, their helper T cells are just, there's so few of them that their immune system can't even function and they end up uh, dying from um, some kind of uh, infection or disease because they don't have the proper immunity anymore. Uh, suppressor T cells, don't worry about them, and memory T cells, which the memory T cells are produced to remember so that the next time your body is infected with, say, uh, the measles virus or that particular strain of the flu, then you will already have your uh, T cells ready to go. They're, they don't have to go through this whole process again because they're already there. So you can respond a lot faster to an infection. Okay, so T cells are activated. They form helper. They form helper T cells, they form killer T cells, they form memory cells. And don't worry about the suppressor uh, T cells, but that's just, just FYI, there are other cells that are also, um, or other clones that are going to be produced. Okay, B cells, same sort of thing. Uh, the helper T cell activates the B cell, and also uh, macrophages can activate the B cell. And the B cell uh, will then divide into plasma cells, which secrete antibodies and they also produce memory cells. So the B cells also produce memory cells, so the next time you're attached by the, attacked by this particular pathogen, you will already be ready to go. So you've got all your memory B cells and T cells uh, in your system. So for instance, if you have the chicken pox, if you're attacked by the chicken pox virus, um, your uh, immune system um, is activated when you get the virus or, incidentally, when you get the vaccine, but we'll talk more about that in class, and um, your memory 
these cells and T cells are ready to go, so the next time you encounter the chickenpox virus, you are not going to get sick. All right, so in summary, this is a nice short one as well. In uh, summary, I need you to watch this little animation. Um, there's a lot more information in this animation than you need to be, uh, than you need to be uh, accountable for. That what I want you to remember is that um, the, different, the different levels of defense and the fact that uh, certain white blood cells do something called phagocytosis, right? And then the lymphocytes are involved in specific defense and you've got two types. You've got your T cells and your B cells and your T cells um, form the helper cells and the killer T cells and the memory cells and B cells secrete antibodies and also form uh, memory cells. So what we covered in the mini lecture is what you're expected to know. However, there's, uh, this is an excellent summary of the immune system in general and, um, and will help you understand it better. The immune system is incredibly, incredibly complex, so we are only really scratching the surface of how it operates. Um, that's another uh, take-home message, that we're really not covering everything that we need to cover about the immune system. It's a lot more complex than we're making it out to be. All right, you may uh, watch the video, and you're done with this mini-lecture. And you will have a quiz on this information that will be part of your homework grade. And of course, any information in this video is fair game for the exam.